Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial and in this video we are going to be taking a look at container views and as you will see it's a lot of fun working with container views because it can save you a lot of code, time and space. So in this video we're going to take a look at how to use it uh, but before we jump into this video I just want to give a quick shout out to another YouTube channel or another YouTube creator who also does Swift stuff which is uh, Mark Moikens from Big Mountain Studio. He's got a great video, he's got a lot of, a bunch of great videos on how to make your apps pretty, how to build in animations and all other cool stuff. So if you want to know how to make your apps look pretty, nice and just work beautifully, then check out his channel. I will leave a link down in the description for it. This is also my second time recording this video because I forgot to start the screen capture and I realized that I also did that right now, so let's just start it. So if I have to drink a lot and my voice is a little bit <clears throat> uh, during this video, then that is why, because this is my second take. But let's, let's try one more time. Uh, for, for you, this is the first time. Uh, so let's <laughs> create a new Xcode project. And I'm going to call this project container2. And I'm going to build this for the iPhone and uh, just save my uh, project on my desktop. And what we're going to do is we're going to just jump straight to our storyboard and we're going to start by laying it out. So what of course we're going to need is we need a container view because a container view video without a container view would be pretty dull. So I'm just going to drag it in here and make it uh, this height approximately. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make my own tab bar controller um, or at least something very similar. So as you will see, as I dragged in this container view, I got a second storyboard or a second view controller. And this view controller, or view, view controller right here works as a completely normal view controller. This is, I want you to see it as a completely normal view controller. The only difference is that you can display that view controller over another view controller. So this is our normal view controller and this view controller or our container view will be displayed uh, right here. So this blue area marks where our second view is going to appear. And as you can see, I can make it as uh, tall as I want to and that reflects in the size of this view controller. But I'm just going to leave it at this height and I'm going to drag in or a couple of icons. I've created three icons that I'm going to use in order to populate the view with. So just drop it right here. And you can get these by downloading the project files in the description. There you will have all of these icons and the whole app if you want that also. So now I'm going to find a button and I'm going to drag and drop it in my view controller right here and set the image to be the uh, be my first icon just like that and I'm just going to set width and height to be equal to 100 just like this and then I'm going to take this nice looking button and I'm going to copy and paste it three times so one two and three and then, then I'm just going to change the icon image here uh, icon one icon two and icon three so here we got our three icons and now uh, let's just launch the app to see if everything is looking great. I'm just going to set the background image to black so that we have a nice contrast and I'm going to launch it on my trusted iPhone 7. And now what we should find is that we have our completely normal view controller but upon that view controller we have our uh, container view as a nice second view controller. And while this is launching, I can say that the great thing with the view con um, container view, as you will see, is you don't know, need to do, let's see, take a look at the app. You don't need to do this for every single view controller. Once you have programmed this part right here, the functions will be exactly the same on any view controller. So instead of making these buttons for view control one, two, three, four, five, six, you simply copy paste and the functions and the look will be exactly the same. So that's a great thing. So as you can see, it's working exactly as we wanted to. We got our container view down at the button of our normal view. So that's working brilliantly. 
So let's uh, set our app on pause and take the next step here. So what I want to do is I want to add some functions to these buttons before we add another one of these views right here. And because this is a completely normal view controller, we simply create a new file uh, for this one so that we can add functions to it. Or actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this one because we're not going to have need to add some functions to this view controller. It's just going to be a completely normal uh, view controller. So let's set the class of this, um, this container view right here to be our UI view controller or just view controller is what it's named. And then we can bring up our assistant editor, jump over, and here we will have our view controller file. So now I'm just going to connect my buttons, drag them in, control drag. And this one is going to be my home button, which is going to allow me to go back home. This is going to be my change color button, which is going to allow me to change the background color of our container view. And then I'm going to have an information slash help button, which is going to provide the user with some much needed help. So here we got our three buttons. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to add some functions into my change color button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the background color of our container view. And we do that by saying self dot view dot background color is equal to UI color dot white, which is the normal color. Just need to add an if here. If the background color is white, which is it, it which it is right now, we are going to set the color of the background to be black. And if it is already black, then we're going to set, or I mean, if it's already white, then we are going to set the, I mean, if it's, let's see, we're checking here if the background color is white, if it is, we're setting it to black. If it's not white, we are setting it to white, exactly as we had it, and we just need to remove one equal sign here and one equals sign right here. And uh, because we're at it, we can just add this second function here also by just creating a simple alert. Let's just create some more space here. Let's jump over to our view controller. Let alert is equal to UI alert controller. And the title is going to be alert and message. Uh, here is the help that you need, exclamation mark. Preferred style, I'm just going to go with alert. And then we're going to add an action to this alert and the UI alert action that we're going to add here. Let's add a title, which is just, just going to be okay. Style is going to be default. Handler, we don't need that. And then we just add another parentheses right here. Then we are going to display it self dot percent view controller and the view controller that we want to present is alert animated true completion nil. So hopefully by now you just see that we're just we're simply doing completely normal stuff, something that we have always done. We are we have a view controller and we add certain actions to it. Now the great thing I want to show you and the reason why we, why we are creating these uh, functions is to show you that these functions are now valid in all view controllers. So let's click on change color. This is working beautifully and information which is displaying an alert or should be displaying an alert, but I probably have created it under the wrong button. Yes, I have. So let's click this one and the alert is functioning. Let's just copy paste this code and paste it under the right button, which is the help button. And now that, that, and now that we know that our functions are working and our buttons are functional, we can drag in a second view controller. So let's do that. And this is going to be the view controller, a completely normal view control, control as you see now. But now we're going to sprinkle some container view magic on it. So we search for container view, like we did at the beginning, and we drag in a normal container view. And we set the height to be equal to this one. And this has a height of 156 and we cut and paste it right in here. And as you see, it creates another view controller, but this time we don't need it, we delete it. 
And then we select this and we control drag over to this view controller right here. And basically what this is doing is we're saying mirror this view controller right here. So we simply say embed. And now this view controller is displaying here as well as in our second view controller. And in order to prove that, because I don't want to be just sitting here and saying that, uh, I want to prove it to you. And I do that by placing a button right here, which says uh, press here. And I'm making the text color white, just like this. And then I'm control dragging over to my second view controller and clicking uh, show detail. So what I'm doing now is actually, I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. All we have done is we have taken our container view and displayed it in our second view controller also. So now it's accessible to us in our first view controller and in our second view controller. So let's see if that is the case. I can use it here as I would normally, but now as I transition over to my second one, I still have the functions available to me. And the last function that we need to add now is our home button. So let's quickly do that by heading over to view controller and saying, let my view is equal to uh, self dot storyboard dot uh, instantiate uh, view controller with identifier. And we just need to give it an identifier so that we can refer to it. And I'm picking my first view controller and I'm adding an ID of one, two, three. Oh, that was a nice rhyme. Make sure that you write it under storyboard ID. Then we head over to view controller and we paste that as the identifier and we say as view controller. And then we can say self dot present and the view controller that we want to present is, uh, and here we probably have an error. Oh, we need an exclamation mark. Okay, that was an easy fix. Uh, view control to present is our my view uh, controller animated true completion handler nil. And as you can see, all we're doing is we're creating a reference to our first view controller, and then we are presenting it with this statement right here. So let's see if this is working as we want it to work. So let's launch our application. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try clicking on my home button. So right now, of course, it's just creating multiple versions of my view controller, but that isn't the interesting part. We want to transition over to our second view controller. Again, all of the functions are available and I can now click on home and we are back to home. So this is our custom uh, tab, uh, tab bar controller. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a like by clicking the like button down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video or it was helpful to you, make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. Other than that, thank you for watching.